G'day. Today's subject is the pig tapeworm. Why this is a subject is because of interesting news from California that it may be becoming endemic there. The pig tapeworm is a tapeworm that lives in pigs quite happily, but it can also live in people. For both pigs and people, it is not good. People suffer from it a bit more than when pigs have it, but it's not good for pigs either. It's had a very long history. It may be that humans are actually responsible for the pig tapeworm because one theory goes that we evolved in East Africa and when we ate gazelles, antelopes, that kind of thing, caught on the grasslands of Africa. We ate them half raw or raw and managed to pick up tapeworm infections from the raw animals. Much later on, when humans domesticated pigs, they passed on the tapeworm infection to the pigs and that would evolve much later on into the pig tapeworm that we know today. Its Latin name is Tania solium and it is a very nasty little bugger. And it can cause problems anywhere in your body. Because it lays eggs, because of these eggs will develop into small larvae, and they can get anywhere in your body and it's pretty bad for you. And if they get into your brain, it's very, very bad for you because they can do anything like cause epilepsy, paralysis of any particular part of your body, insanity, they can drive you quite mad, anything at all like that, any kind of neurological condition. Imagine having your brain shot full of shotgun pellets. Now if you colour those shotgun pellets white, that's how those cysts would look in your brain, little cysts little blobs of calcification inside your brain where the larva and the eggs uh, have been sorry I should say larva then uh, and these are destructive to brain matter so when you are cooking pork you must cook it very thoroughly you must cook it well. That goes for any kind of meat, really. Any kind of food that needs cooking, you really should cook it well. Because there are a whole range of different infections that you can pick up. Now, in California, in the USA, the pig tapeworm has come about because of marginalised communities. People shoved to the outside of society people without sufficient health care, Mexican workers, illegal immigrants, and so on. It has now become a little bit in the news about these risks, but pig tapeworm infection can happen anywhere, and it happened, for example, a while back in New York, where Jewish grandmothers started coming down with the infection of the pig tapeworm, including neurosister cirrhosis, the condition where the larvae get into your brain and cause these cysts. Now, how the hell would Jewish grandmothers observing a very kosher diet come down with a pig tapeworm? And the reason for that was household help, cooking and cleaning staff, many of whom came from Central or South America or Mexico. And they were often infected without knowing it. If, the hy if their hygiene was at all poor, they were passing on eggs throughout, through them without knowing it. These eggs would then get onto the hands with, if they were bad hygienic practices and to be passed on to whatever they're working on. And when that includes raw food preparation, then you can see how the egg route of transmission comes about. 
and it was grandmothers in the family who would often do the cooking for the family and they would often taste the food to see how it was going, to see how it was like and to see that it was okay. And because they were tasting it, it was still raw or half raw or three quarters raw, they would pick up the infection. And it was only them and not the rest of the family who would pick it up because by the time the food was finished, it was completely prepared, all the eggs would be dead so nobody else would get the infection. That's an interesting bit of history. Another bit of history is how, for example, when the Indonesians took over part of uh, Papua New Guinea, they sent in Indonesian soldiers, the Indonesian army in the usual way. They also sent in gifts of pigs to the tribes people, the highlands tribes people of Papua New Guinea. And one tribe came down with a terrible, almost epidemic of infection, including a very large number of cases of neurocystocirrhosis. Why that happened was because they weren't used to keeping pigs in that tribe, and most especially pigs straight from Indonesia. They also did not observe the hygiene which is usually observed in Indonesia about cooking, in Bali especially. And they would often eat their pork raw, or at the very most half raw only half cooked, while in Bali or in the rest of Indonesia pork is cooked very well. As a result, a whole lot of people came down with very nasty infections very quickly, they weren't used to it at all, and it killed quite a lot of them. What happens in the USA is somewhat different, you don't get that many deaths, but you do get the, this level of infection which is not noticed. You get carriers, you get people who are carrying the infection without knowing it, or they do know it but they can't do anything about it because they have no access to proper health care. So one good thing would be to make health care accessible to everybody and not make health care impossible to afford for many. That would be one very good idea to avoid infection from things like this and other things. There is a similar problem with a lot of other different worms. For example, in Germany, there is the Fuchsbandwurm, which is not the same thing. It's also a tapeworm, but it's a different one. Echinococcus multilocularis is its name. It lives in foxes. And hunters in Germany are required by regulation to wear gauze mouth masks when dealing with fox corpses to make sure that they do not breathe in any such infection from foxes. But if you've been out in the wilds, especially down in South Germany, it can be that you actually pick up such an infection from a dead fox or from even, you know, from the from where live foxes have been. So do be aware of that problem as well. It's not the same tapeworm, it's a different one, but do keep these dangers in mind. Be responsible, be clean, be hygienic, be careful, and just observe these generals and you'll be okay. There's a very good book, by the way, this one, New Guinea Tapeworms and Jewish Grandmothers, which contains some of the information which I've talked about today. It's by Robert Disselwitz, who's a very famous Marie, um, malariologist, sorry, an expert in malaria. But he's also an expert in other tropical diseases and such infections such as these tapeworms. He writes a very, very good book. I'll give full details in the commentary box below. And as for the rest of the details, keep watching the news of what's happening in places like California and so forth and so on. Many thanks for listening. Until later. Bye.